Gordon Parks was born in Fort Scott, Kansas on November 30th, 1912. He was the youngest of 15 children and his father was a vegetable farmer. He attended a segregated elementary school. His high school had both blacks and whites because the town was too small for segregated high schools, but black students were not allowed to play sports or attend school activities, and they were discouraged from developing aspirations for higher education. Parks related in a documentary on his life that his teacher told him that his desire to go to college would be a waste of money. Parks' mother, Sarah, died when Gordon was 14, and soon after he was sent to St. Paul, Minnesota, to live with a sister and her husband. He and his brother-in-law argued frequently, and Parks was finally turned out onto the street to fend for himself at age 15. Struggling to survive, he worked in brothels, and as a singer, a piano player, a busboy, and traveling waiter, and a semi-pro basketball player. In 1929, he briefly worked in a gentleman's club, the Minnesota Club, in St. Paul. There he observed the trappings of success and was able to read many books from the club library. When the Wall Street crash of 1929 brought an end to the club, he jumped a train to Chicago where he managed to land a job in a flop house. At the age of 25, Parks was struck by photographs of migrant workers in a magazine. He bought his first camera of White Launder Brilliant for $7.50 at a Seattle, Washington pawn shop and taught himself how to take photos. The photography clerks who developed Park's first roll of film applauded his work and prompted him to seek a fashion assignment at a woman's clothing store in St. Paul, Minnesota, owned by Frank Murphy. Those photographs caught the eye of Marva Lewis, wife of heavyweight boxing champion Joe Lewis. She encouraged Parks and his wife Sally Alvis to move to Chicago in 1940, where he began a portrait business and specialized in photographs of society women. Park's photographic work in Chicago, especially in capturing the myriad of experiences of African Americans across the city, led him to receive the Julius Rosenwald Fellowship in 1941, paying him $200 a month and offering him his choice of employer, which in turn contributed to being asked to join the Pharma Security Administration, which was chronicling the nation's social conditions. Working at the FSA as a trainee under Roy Stryker, Parks created one of his best-known photographs, American Gothic, Washington, D.C., named after the iconic Grant Wood painting, American Gothic, a legendary painting of a traditional, stoic, white American farm couple. Parks' haunting photograph shows a black woman, Ella Watson, who worked on the cleaning crew of the FSA building standing stiffly in front of an American flag hanging on the wall, a broom in one hand and a mop in the background. Parks had been inspired to create the image after encountering racism repeatedly in restaurants and shops in the segregated capital city. After the FSA disbanded, Parks remained in Washington, D.C. as a correspondent with the Office of War Information, where he photographed the all-black 332nd Fighter Group, the Tuskegee Airmen. He was unable to follow the group overseas to war, so he resigned from the OWI. He would later follow Stryker to the Standard Oil Photography Project in New Jersey, which assigned photographers to take pictures of small towns and industrial centers. The most striking works by Parks during that period included Dinner Time at Hercules Brown's Home in Somerville, Maine in 1944, Car Loaded with Furniture on Highway, 1945, Self Portrait, 1945, Grease Plant Worker, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, 1946, and Ferry Commuters of Staten Island, New York, in 1946. Parks renewed his search for photography jobs in the fashion world. Following his resignation from the Office of War Information, Parks moved to Harlem and became a freelance fashion photographer for Vogue under the editorship of Alexander Lieberman. Despite racist attitudes of the day, Vogue editor Lieberman hired him to shoot a collection of evening gowns. A 1948 photographic essay on a young Harlem gang leader, Red Jackson, won Parks a staff job as a photographer and writer with America's leading photo magazine, Life. His involvement with Life would last until 1972. For over 20 years, Parks produced photographs on subjects including fashion, sports, 
Broadway, poverty, and racial segregation, as well as portraits of Malcolm X, Stokely Carmichael, Muhammad Ali, Barbara Streisand, Marilyn Monroe, and others. He became one of the most provocative and celebrated photojournalists in the United States. In 1961, Life magazine sent Parks to Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, to document the suffering of the poor. While there, Parks encountered a young boy named Flavio da Silva, who appeared to be starving and very ill, yet was carrying water to his family home in the Catacumba favela, up a very poor neighborhood of Rio. Parks spent the next couple of weeks documenting Flavio and his family's living conditions and highlighting the plight of young Flavio, who was suffering from a severe asthma and malnourishment. After his series was published in Life magazine, a hospital in Denver offered to treat De Silva, and readers donated $30,000, about $250,000 in today's money, to help out. De Silva recovered from his illnesses at the Denver hospital, and the money raised by the readers of Life enabled the De Silva family to move to a much better neighborhood. Parks revisited De Silva throughout the years and maintained friendship till his death. During his years with Life, Parks also wrote a few books on the subjects of photography, particularly documentary photography, and in 1960 was named Photographer of the Year by the American Society of Magazine Photographers. Shaft, a 1971 detective film directed by Parks and starring Richard Roundtree as John Shaft, became a major hit that spawned a series of films that would be labeled as blaxploitation. The blaxploitation genre was one in which images of lower-class blacks being involved with drugs, violence, and women were exploited for commercially successful films featuring black actors and was popular with a section of black community. Parks's feel for settings was confirmed by Shaft with its portrayal of a super-cool leather-clad black private detective hired to find the kidnapped daughter of a Harlem racketeer. Parks also directed a 1972 sequel, Shaft's Big Score, in which the protagonist finds himself caught in the middle of a rival gangs of racketeers. Parks' other directorial credits include Super Cops, of 1974, and Lead Belly, 1976, a biographical film of the blues musician Huddy Ledbetter. In the 1980s, he made several films for television and composed the music in, in a libretto for Martin, a ballet tribute to Martin Luther King Jr., which premiered in Washington, D.C. during 1989. It was screened on national television on King's birthday, 1990. In 2000, as an homage, he had a cameo appearance in the Shaft sequel that starred Samuel L. Jackson in the title role as the namesake nephew of the original John Shaft. In the cameo scene, Parks was sitting playing chess when Jackson greeted him as Mr. P. Parks' works are in the permanent collections of major museums, among them the Art Institute of Chicago, the Baltimore Museum of Art, the Cincinnati Art Museum, the Detroit Institute of Arts, the International Center of Photography in New York, the New York Metropolitan Museum of Art, and the Museum of Modern Art in New York, the Minneapolis Institute of Art, the Museum of Fine Arts in Houston, the St. Louis Art Museum, the Smithsonian National Museum of American History in Washington, D.C., and the Virginia Museum of Fine Arts, Richmond, Virginia. I had a great sense of curiosity and a great sense of just wanting to achieve, he said. I just forgot I was black and walked in and asked for a job and tried to be prepared for what I was asking for. Gordon Parks died at 93 years old on March 7th, 2006 in Manhattan, New York. <laughs>